What's going on guys? It's your boy Brent Lomer back with another one for you. We're going to be talking about fat loss today and specifically the activities that are most likely to promote fat loss within your body to get that body looking banging again, to tighten things up, okay, to feel better about yourself, to look better, lose some inches, shed some pounds. All right. So the activities, we're actually going to put them into a hierarchy. I know you're wicked busy. I know you got stuff going on. I know you got kids doing sports in the evening. You're helping out with homework. I know that you're working late and coming home late, having to make supper. You just don't have a lot of time. So what are the activities that are most likely to promote fat loss in my body? And if you're short on time, how do I pick number one, number two in order to still get results? Don't pick something that's lower down on the chain because then you're not getting the best bang for your buck. So those activities include, here's number one. Number one is nutrition. Okay, nutrition is number one. Who's eaten a Mars bar before? About 250 calories or so, okay, depending. And um, who's trying to burn off 250 calories? Burning off 250 calories is a lot more difficult than taking in 250 calories, you know what I mean? So when it comes to fat loss, we put at the number one spot nutrition and dialing in those nutritional habits. We do it in a habit-based manner, so you would adhere to your, or have success with your nutritional habit for the day. That's your number one priority when it comes to making those changes in your body composition, losing that fat, and uh, get in shape. Know what I mean? You can't, you can't outwork bad nutritional decisions, so that's why we put nutrition at the number one spot. And the number two spot is resistance training. So I think a lot of times people think the activity that most likely promotes fat loss is, is cardio, going out for a run and you know, lacing up the sneakers and just pounding the pavement. But we're finding that's not actually the case. And here's why. When you go for a run, you know, you'll, you'll burn about 100 calories a mile. Okay, so you run a couple miles, burn a couple hundred calories. That's great, that's awesome. I'm not trying to take anything away from that or taking anything away from you if you do that. But there's very little that happens after the activity. So we'll talk a little bit later about the afterburn. After you finish the activity, it, you know, there might be a little bit of a burn afterwards, a little bit of an increased metabolic rate afterwards, but it doesn't do a lot as far as um, increasing your metabolism kind of later on into the day. Okay, But if you take something like weight training, Weight training, higher intensity, tends to have a little bit more of an afterburn effect. But most importantly, weight training actually puts muscle on your body. And it's like, oh man, I don't want to be all bulky. I don't want to look like a dude. Not going to happen. Truth is, you don't have the testosterone to, so, to support that. don't have the hormones to support that. Um, what will happen is your clothes will fit better if you put on a little bit, a little bit of muscle. You'll feel better. You'll move better. And your metabolism will actually increase from having more metabolically active tissue. Muscle is metabolically active tissue. It'll burn up calories, and that's burn up fat. Okay, so when it comes to the hierarchy, you wanna choose exercises that favor um, increasing your metabolism at other times in the day. I know a lot of us wanna just burn a ton of calories in our workout, um, and you know, at times that, that might be beneficial, but the real game changer when it comes to fat loss is actually putting more muscle on your body so that it's easier for your body to burn fat in the other 23 hours during the day. You know what I mean by that? Cool. So that is number two on our hierarchy, weight training. Number three, high intensity interval training, HIT. So we talked about the after a burn before. With high intensity intervals, you actually increase your metabolism quite a long time after the activity is over, which is really, really cool. So if I do some intervals at like 10 o'clock, like I'm still burning calories at noon, I'm still burning extra calories later on, sometimes even into the next day, you're still burning extra calories as a result of that high intensity interval training that you did, which is super, super cool, right? So when it comes to selecting exercises, you want to kind of use big muscle exercises, things like squat jumps, um, sprinting. You know, you could do uh, air dyne, assault bike. You could be hitting a spin bike. 
kind of big muscle activities. Um, mountain climbers, skipping, it's all good stuff. But the ticket is to make sure it's high intensity. If you, if you do an exercise and you don't rest enough, what happens? Your intensity goes down, 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 and then you just make things more and more low intensity, and then you don't have that same afterburn effect that you would if you did a higher intensity and you rested a little bit longer. So that's kind of what we're trying to get at. You need to rest uh, either equal or greater amounts of time than you work when it comes to making your high intensity intervals actually be high intensity. You know what I mean? So if you're working for 20 seconds, maybe you're resting for 40 seconds. I like that one because then you're just going hard for 20 seconds on the minute. 30 seconds on, 60 seconds off. Could be uh, 60 seconds on, um, two minutes, 120 seconds off. Whatever, as long as you're equal or greater amount of time uh, for your worked to rest ratios. Okay, and that's what keeps that intensity high. And that's what enables that after burn effect that persists sometimes into the next day, okay? So number three on the fat loss hierarchy is high intensity intervals. Number four, we put cardio, traditional long, slow distance cardio, going for a run, all awesome stuff. I like to go for runs, it's cool. But the way that we typically run it is we would do what's called a mobility circuit. So for a mobility circuit, we would basically just string together about eight exercises or so and just go back and forth amongst those exercises nonstop. You know, we use mobility exercises, um, things like uh, glute bridges and dead bugs and quadruped, groin, groin mobilizations, um, st stuff like that that you, that you would see in your program, specifically stuff that you would see in the warm-up, lateral lunges, squats. Um, and just run through those exercises nonstop. And we try to keep the heart rate in like a 120 to 150 beats per minute. Um, enough that you are you feel like you're working, but you could kind of maintain a conversation. Or you can still breathe through your nose. Um, that's kind of what we do use to gauge our intensity. But 120 to 150 or still able to breathe through the nose. So that is kind of what would be next. On the hierarchy, number four is that long, slow cardio or your mobility circuits. Not saying it's bad. Like I said, I still go for runs and I love them. I feel great. I feel great after I run. But in terms of maximizing your fat loss and if you have to put priority on some other activities, I would put them on <clears throat> activities higher up in the chain, i.e. nutrition, i.e. weight training, i.e. high intensity intervals. Number four is long, slow distance cardio. And um, then we move on to number five. Number five is kind of your lower intensity activities, whether it's going for a run, um, any sort of gardening or yard work or housework and stuff like that. All stuff that needs to get done, all such stuff that's awesome. And hey, if you're a beginner and uh, you're just trying to get started and trying to accumulate a little bit of activity, this stuff is awesome. I'd probably say do it um, over the higher intensity stuff because it's something that you're probably more likely to do, okay? Because really, what it comes down to is the things that you can consistently do. So I'm not knocking on lower intensity activities. These are great. These are great. And you should probably be doing them anyways just to be living a physical, physically active life, right? And just to be keep moving. But in terms of the fat loss hierarchy, they would be kind of on the lower end of the spectrum. Uh, we put it in the fifth, fifth spot. Okay, but I'm not saying don't do it. Um, it's a great way to re actively recover. It's a great way to get stuff done. It's a great way to kind of take your mind off of stuff. Going for a walk. I go for walks. I go for walks with my dog, dogs, and I love it. And, you know, it does good things for my mind and, you know, it does some good stuff for my body as well. So that's the order. That's the fat loss hierarchy. Number one, nutritional habits. Okay. You can't outwork poor nutritional decisions. Okay. Think of the Mars bar. Number two, weight training. Put more muscle on your body. Make it easy for your body to burn more fat later on in the day, in the other 23 hours when you're not working out. Number three, higher intensity, high intensity intervals. Uh, so make sure that you're working, um, your work is uh, followed up by a good amount of rest. That rest should be at least as long or longer, two, three times as long in order to keep that intensity high and in order to get that good afterburn effect. Number four is your longer slow cardio. Again, we love the mobility circuits, stringing together about eight exercises 
um, basic exercises like lateral lunges, quadruped groin mobs, kickbacks, glute bridges, dead bugs, wall slides, and just running through those circuit fa fashion, keeping about 120, 150 beats per minute, or being able to breathe through your nose. And then lastly, we would put the lower intensity activities like gardening, like going for walks, like um, cleaning up around the house, all stuff that's awesome and needs to be done, but it is lower on the, uh, on the hierarchy when it comes to fat loss. So I know you're busy. I know you got lots of stuff going on. This is the hierarchy. This is the way that we set it up. Um, if you don't have a lot of time and you need to put priority on something, number one, nutrition, number two, weight training, and then just move on down towards your lower intensity activities. Okay. Hope this helped guys. Hope you guys can get some value from this. Hope this can kind of be a catalyst for uh, some of your fat loss so that you can start feeling better and looking better and moving better and uh, be the person that you want to be.